So what is breast cancer? Are you at high risk? And how is it treated? We will teach you all about it. Breast cancer is complicated and presents in unique ways in very different people. I want to give you a brief overview of how often breast cancer occurs, who might be at risk, and generally how it's treated. And I'm also going to share with you some cutting edge advances in breast cancer care. In this lesson, I'm going to tell you what breast cancer means and your chance of getting it. I'm going to tell you how it's generally treated and when to start getting screening mammograms. I'm also going to give you some suggestions about how to reduce your lifetime risk of developing breast cancer. So let's get started. So what is breast cancer? Well, 80% of things we call breast cancer are called an invasive breast cancer. So the way to think about it, an abnormal growth in your breast. These are cells that are growing abnormally fast and when they have invasive capabilities, invasive breast cancer, some of the cells can leave the tumor, go to the lymph nodes, or go to other places in your body. That's when breast cancer can threaten your life. Now on the good side, we cure about 90% of all women with breast cancer. So the treatment is good, the threat is real, and what we call breast cancer is generally invasive breast cancer. The other 20%, it's listed as stage zero breast cancer. But what does stage zero mean? Stage zero breast cancer called DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ. It's 20% of what we call a breast cancer. The way to think about that, it, it is more of a precancerous change in the breast. Can cells in the breast that are working their way to become invasive that can spread elsewhere, but they haven't gotten there yet. And so we, when we do find DCIS, we take it out to prevent that process of DCIS to evolve into invasive, invasive breast cancer. Hardly anyone dies of DCIS. So invasive breast cancer is the one that we talk about the most. So what is my chance of getting breast cancer and am I at high risk? Well, if you're a woman, you're at a higher risk than men for getting breast cancer. And in women, there's about a lifetime risk of 10% of getting breast cancer, give or take a percentage point or two. If you are a man, you can still get breast cancer and we treat it very similar to women, but it's extremely rare, but it's something to keep in mind. A trend in breast cancer is identifying women who are at an increased lifetime risk of breast cancer. So let's say we identify a woman who has dense breasts or a strong family history or carries the breast cancer gene or other high risk factors. We can identify them as being a 20% or 30% or an 80% lifetime risk of developing breast cancer. And when we are successful in identifying those women, then we can manage them in a way to offset some of the risk of breast cancer in their lives. How is breast cancer treated? Luckily, the vast majority of women diagnosed with breast cancer have early stage breast cancer where their tumor is small and there's likely no cancer in the lymph nodes, and if so, just a little bit. So in most of these situations, surgery comes first as the first treatment. But let me give you an example. Let's say a woman comes in, she has a one centimeter breast cancer, the usual process is this. Get a biopsy, determine it's cancer after having a mammogram. Visit with your surgeon. Typically going to surgery first to remove the cancer and check a couple lymph nodes. Then going to visit a medical oncologist to determine whether or not there's a benefit or not from chemotherapy. Most don't need chemotherapy. And if that's not the case, then they can go and visit with a radiation oncologist if they've had a lumpectomy, they might need radiation to that breast to lessen the chance anything grows back in the future. And then about 80% of women will benefit after radiation of taking hormonal therapy, estrogen blocking medications. So breast cancer treatment is one of the most complicated decision processes in all of healthcare. 
And that's why you will get the best cancer outcomes and best treatment when you have a team of breast cancer specialists working for you for your unique breast cancer situation. So what age should I start getting screening mammograms? Well, the simple answer is probably at the age of 40 going forward annually. However, in the last number of years, there's some evidence to suggest that women will do just as well if they start mammograms a little later, maybe 45 or 50, and possibly get them a little less frequently. It is a big controversial debate. The dust will settle on what is the best approach for getting mammograms. There are advantages picking up cancers early. There are disadvantages that mammograms can guide you to more x-rays and biopsies that ultimately prove to not be cancer. So it is a complex subject, but to be safe and let the dust settle, I would recommend that you start getting mammograms at the age of 40 and get them annually going forward until more information is available and the picture is more clear. How do I reduce my risk of getting breast cancer? Well, the bigger concept in this is live a healthy lifestyle. A healthy lifestyle, and a few of the things I'm going to mention, can reduce your lifetime risk of developing breast cancer and a number of other cancers. We really study this and really feel it's true. So, starting out first, two hours a week of exercise, fairly vigorous exercise, has been shown convincingly to reduce a woman's risk of developing breast cancer. Obesity is a risk factor for breast cancer, so if you have weight loss to reduce obesity or the severity of your obesity, you're reducing your risk of developing breast cancer. Breastfeeding. If you breastfed your children and for the longer period of breastfeeding, the more the benefit. That is a risk reduction lifestyle and also limiting alcohol, which has been shown to lessen breast cancer development. Think lifestyle to reduce your risk of breast cancer. When you know more about breast cancer, you can better find out if you're at an increased risk, know what to do to reduce your risk, and begin breast screening that is appropriate for you to find breast cancer when it's early, not late. Take our free online lessons on all of these topics at the Breast Cancer School for Patients. To learn more about breast cancer, visit the Breast Cancer School for Patients, where we actually teach you everything you need to know. We're here to help you get the best possible breast cancer care in your community. Register on our website to get our list of questions to prepare you for your next doctor visit.